G'day guys and welcome to Iron Empire. I'm Mark and on this rewind special we're going to be taking a look at episode 22, the XA Ute Revival. So this episode happened over a year ago and it seemed to do really well. It took me from under a thousand subscribers to well over 3,000 in a little over a week. So for some reason people really enjoyed it. But since then a lot's changed. So sit back, enjoy the episode and afterwards we'll touch base on everything that's happened since. But before you do, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment because it all helps the channel grow. Let's go. Stays all loaded up, ready to hit the road back home and probably start lowering it tonight because I'm impatient. Can't wait, it looks wicked. Alright, well that's it, hitting the road. We've got about 12 k's on dirt so I'll be going real real easy, I don't want to scratch this new paint. Car's dead. I seem to have lost like a cylinder about two k's back, and it was just sort of chugging, chugging away. And then I lost power altogether. So I don't know. It sort of seemed like there was just a plug off, or like a lead off, or something like that. But I don't know. It won't start now, so I'll just give it a little bit of time. It wasn't really hot or anything. Might just check over things under the engine, under the bonnet, and see what happens. I'm not sure if that's coincidental because it wasn't hot but I might try and rectify that and then try again. Surely this is a coincidence, like the car was not running hot at all. It's getting about half temperature. I was watching it like a hawk and the thing has conked out and now I found a leak in the cooling system, so I don't know. Maybe it's its way of telling me to fix that before I go any further. This has been shortened, I'm about to do it up and so hopefully this gets me home. Hopefully it runs again. So 
But this has happened like 300 meters away from where I had a breakdown in the Cougar. If you haven't seen that episode, watch me fix cars on the side of the road in that one too. Be a long process 600 mil at a time 500 mil at a time damn all right we're nearly full this is leaking and i think what's happened is it's dripped water straight onto the dizzy which is down below and that's why i got a miss so i wouldn't be surprised if this thing fired right up let's see how we go Ridiculous. one I've never had this before my trailer axle outer bearing has come off and the hub is about to peel off of the axle I went around the corner and see my wheel sticking out a mile I was running around about and I had to pull off the side of the road here there's always fucking something Check this out. The bearing is still on there. I don't know how the hell that happened. Man. You couldn't make this stuff up. I don't know how the hell that happened. My bearing is all still in place on the hub and the wheel was literally come past the hub beyond the bearing and nut and everything. Yeah, I don't know. Alright, so after watching back this video, I remembered that it was not long prior that I actually had a brake issue with this trailer. The driver's side got cooked. Uh, I'm not sure if the brakes were left on or whatever the case may be, but I ended up rebuilding the side. I put new brakes, new backing plate, new wheel cylinder, everything. Um, but I didn't click. The left-hand side obviously got hot too. Um, obviously not as hot, but probably hot enough to melt out all of the grease that was in that wheel bearing. So. I must have been running dry and this was the day that I decided to finally give up. I'm about 15k from home. Well I'm only two streets away from home so I'm claiming a win. I drove this thing about 15 kilometers with three wheels on. The brake um, drum backing is about one inch off the ground the whole way. I've done about probably 20 k's an hour or less. Just creep the whole way home because I had no way of doing it otherwise. So slow and steady, last spoon drain, we're there. What an ordeal. Alright, well, made it at home, limped it the whole way, just had some tea, now to unload the XA, 
and do literally everything else that I plan to do with it. Well, it's day one with the XA build. Um, already got the uh, one of the leaf springs out. Uh, it had two helper springs. I'm not sure if it's like a factory option for like a heavy duty tow pack or something, but two real heavy duty helper springs. I've removed those, reclamped the pack, um, and I've given it a coat of paint with some Dymark here. Um, this is Dymark Rust Reformer, and it's like directly goes directly over bare metal. Um, on sort of rusty surfaces. I've already given it a wire wheel, but I didn't want to go nuts with this thing. So coat of rust reformer comes up wicked, a nice satin finish. And um, I've also got a pair of 245 60s for this thing. So that is going to be a lot nicer from the back. Some decent meat. Um, yeah, it's not huge. I could probably put like two nine fives on this thing, but uh, two four fives are readily available in a 14 inch. Uh, these wheels are going to be getting satined, the same as the front. So I'll repaint those, and yeah, see if we can get this thing on the ground today. Here we are, uh, day two of the XA build. Day one, I got next to nothing recorded because it was just one challenge after another. Um, the ride height was challenging. I was trying to use a few old school tricks to get the thing low, which didn't really work at all. So I'm back to lowering blocks. So I've got one of those made. I've just got a, the last one up, uh, put them in the car, and then it's onto the front. Andy spent hours inside the car cleaning and it's come up awesome. The interior looks really, really good. Uh, I've got a carpet to fit, which was from a later model car, but I can't be bothered waiting for them to custom make a carpet and send it out. It's not so much the cost. I think they're only about 150 bucks, but I don't know. Maybe I'll order one, but I just want to get the car on on the road and together. Uh, at the moment, I'm just running a dyer down the uh, seat bolts. Uh, so I can get through the uh, seat rails on the seats and put them in the car and Yeah, just keep chipping away. I've got to the next two days I've only got a couple of jobs booked in for the next two days. So I've got plenty of time. Uh, I should have this Cruising by the weekend. There'll be a few little things left to do but more or less getting there Won't be needing those Good news, the car's now on the ground and it is sitting ridiculous. It looks awesome. Now one thing I haven't shown you guys is under the bonnet of this thing. Um, it is pretty tidy, George did paint it and he painted the engine and um, obviously it's still only a six but it looks pretty bloody good. But the only thing it was lacking was original decals. And I'm pretty stoked because the mailman just sorted me out with that. Um, I ordered my graphics kit from Graphics Unlimited. Um, now they're not endorsing me at all, but I ordered all this stuff online. They have a massive range, Ford, Holden, Chrysler, even more stuff, and all really pretty affordable. And I've got a GS kit stripe for this which is my side and an engine decal kit and a few other bits and pieces. I didn't go crazy with it, but I just thought a little, few little bits to make it look factory. Um, just a nice touch and the whole lot, I think I spent about 170 bucks. So, um, and I ordered it not even two days ago and it's already at my doorstep. So happy with the service. I'm gonna open it right now in front of you and I'm hoping the quality's there uh, because so far customer service is top notch. It's well packaged. Nice. Alright, so that's the GS stripe kit. But I'm gonna get Ben um, Ben Reed to come around and put that on the side. I think that's gonna look wicked. The gold on the gold will be a nice touch. 
Now, I've got an engine decal kit, like a standard kit, and then I've got a few extra bits. Um, the bit that goes on the battery, the battery terminal uh, tag, oh, door jam kit. Some of this stuff I don't know where it goes off the top of my head. That's radiator, all motorcraft stuff. So it looks the part. Motorcraft battery. Jack. The one on this car is actually original and in really good shape, so I'll leave that one on there. My invoice. Warning light goes warning goes on the firewall. These are for the wipers, so once you get your uh, so you uh, winders, once you get your window winders on, screw it in, you put those over, little covers, their factory looking seatbelt uh, Ford logos, that's oil cap, um, little motorcraft service sticker, so as if you bought a brand, the car brand new, you'd get a motorcraft service sticker, uh, motorcraft Bosch, that would be for the alternator maybe? Warning to disconnect your battery, that goes on the firewall. Cute little baby 250 cubic inch for the air cleaner. And laminated sticker for the windscreen, which would have been on it from factory. And that might be fuel pump, maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway, it all looks like really, really good. Really happy with that. And um, yeah, as I said, graphics unlimited. So. If you can see that, hopefully, they do decals for everything, definitely everything Aussie. Now, I'll put a link in the bottom of this video, and if you do happen to use these guys for anything, um, which I highly recommend now that I've seen it all, um, tell them where you come across the video, uh, where you come across the site. Tell them you've seen it on my video, um, because as a small business owner, it is always really good to know where your customers are coming from. So. So yeah, we'll uh, get sticking. Right, engine bay stickers are done. Uh, I just want to tidy up the battery wiring a little bit. I've got a feeling that might be on the wrong terminal. Uh, but most of it's there. Bill note actually still had an original sticker on it, so I'll leave that on there. Um, yeah, just a little bit of tidying up on the wiring, but it's mostly pretty good. And yeah, some might not be into it, but I like the factory look. Just makes it look original. Got the uh, factory laminated sticker there. And also up top, I'm going to replace this with a uh, original motorcraft. And that's all for tonight. Carry on tomorrow with strings in the front, and she'll go low. Would you have a go at this? <laughs> I'm bloody stoked with how the things come out, obviously. Um, the ride height ended up great. I ended up doing a set of um, wheel trims on it with the satin centers to go like the original style on the wheels, red walls. Uh, I've done the gold GS stripe, which thanks to Ben uh, for fitting in for me. It's very hard to see in some lights, but in some lights it looks really good. So I'm happy with that subtle look. Um, and I've actually sold the car. So I'm literally on my way today to go drop it off at local transport depot and it's getting sent to Sydney. Um, it's uh, something I'd love to be able to keep, but I can't keep them all. So time to move this one on and um, I'm hoping it's gonna get across the border because at the moment there's some uh, worldwide chaos happening and uh, all the borders are shut somewhat. So. We'll see what happens there, but I'll give you a bit of a tour of the car and uh, yeah, show you what we've done. As you can see, 
as usual, nice set of red walls on a set of factory uh, 12 slots and reproduction uh, stainless trims. That was from um, a local bloke here. Uh, as you can see, the GS stripe, nice subtle gold on gold. I love the look. It is uh, a little bit hard to see, but I am really happy with the outcome. Uh, the interior come out awesomely. Um, Brenton Pike, he uh, made of mine, he's been doing a lot of my trim. He done the seat up nicely. Um, we used an XF carpet because carpet for a uh, bench seat car with a column uh, manual was very hard to find. So I modified an XF carpet to fit and I managed to find some brown floor mats. Um, dash is nice and original, uncracked, amazingly. Um, Brenton done the flat tornado cover for me. And obviously the uh, widened 8 inch 12 slots on the rear. Um, it's uh, under the bonnet. And nice factory looking engine bay. Everything shuts and opens nicely. And that's it for the XA utility build. Uh, as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, maybe check out some of the other videos leading up to this project of how I ended up here. Um, I've got a few videos to come, been a little bit slow lately. Um, so bear with me and uh, I'll see you all next time. Cheers guys. so as I mentioned at the end there the car did get sold and it went to New South Wales to a fella by the name of Adam um, a big car family who are right into their Fords and do a lot of restoration work by trade now I think it was less than a fortnight later and the car had already been stripped down for a complete mechanical restoration so everything under the car and in the engine bay was gone and it was all overhauled the underside of the car looks like brand new now all new front end new disc brakes engine out repainted and it is looking magic there were a few other upgrades as well like xa driving lights which look really nice in the car he changed the gs stripe to a black uh, the car was lifted a little bit as well for more daily driving and also changed the wheels to a set of max now from the feedback i'm getting adam loves the car and it makes me happy that it's gone to a good home and is going to get thoroughly enjoyed and i'm a little bit jealous but <laughs> we can't keep them all Alright, so that is going to be a wrap on the Rewind special on the XA Revival. Thanks for joining me. Please don't forget to check out the online store, which is in the description below. And I'll see you all next time. Cheers, guys.